Hey, what's up, everybody? This is an open discussion with C3 Films. My name is Chris, and this is Cheryl. And today we're going to be talking about the Pixar animated film Luca. It just came out on Disney Plus, so we are going to get into spoiler territory here. If you haven't watched it, it's free on Disney Plus. It's not even Premiere Access, so you can just go and just immediately watch it as long as you have a subscription. So go ahead and watch it, then come back and join us in the discussion. But without further ado, let's just go ahead and jump right into it. Um, so yeah, I didn't. There's not much to say that I did like beforehand. I didn't know anything about this movie. Like I remember seeing a, a spot or two before it came out, but I didn't know. It wasn't like one of the, like other Pixar movies where I know about for a long time before they come out. So this one kind of kind of caught me off guard and snuck up on me. Um, it was was this one that you had been following for a while, or did you? Um, did it kind of surprise you too or like did you only find out about it within the last couple of months I only found out about it within the last couple of months because I was looking for stuff for us to watch <laughs> oh yeah and then right? I noticed uh, that they were going to release it in the summer um, just in time for us to um, to cover it and yeah it looked really cute and interesting um, so I was like yeah hey let's do it it's Pixar Disney Pixar um and they're usually pretty solid, usually. <laughs> yeah, usually, yeah. I I I am impressed. I have to say, with Pixar's ability to tell the same story over again, but make it feel unique and different in some kind of way, because the structure of this film is the same structure as a film like Ratatouille or even like The Little Mermaid for more of a direct comparison of don't go up there, you know, stay down here, this is your place, we never go there, we don't we don't mesh the world, and then inevitably the person's gonna go and take, and take a foray into that world before something happens where things get, go bad, and then, at by, but then by the end it all gets fixed and there's like an emotional moment and you try not to cry and then, you know, roll credits. And so structurally this movie if you've seen a Pixar or any type of Disney movie, you know what's going to happen in this film, like from the jump. Um, there's a couple of, there's like maybe one or two things that surprised me, but for the most part, it plays out kind of how you expect. But it didn't really bother me that much. Yeah, I agree. It's, it's pretty cookie cutter. It's somewhat safe. Um, but I think that the... It almost, like it didn't matter um, because the idea behind the story was um, a little different. It was fun, and I think just the the relationships between the characters were really good, and and just like the flow of it. like everything about it was was just clean and easy. Um, and I think that's why it made it like fairly good like it wasn't it wasn't like i guess super unique and notable where i'm going to tell everyone to go and watch it but it was nice it was wholesome it was cute it was fun um and i really like the messages behind it i guess um which has to do with like friendship and acceptance which are right. things that are like very important to everyday life anyway yeah no uh, absolutely and i i like the fact that um i like the two kids and i like the i like the fact that you have alberto who doesn't really know much about the world but pretends to um and you get the sense that this kid's really been alone for a long time and i mean and you find out later just how long but um, it makes sense why he would latch on so much to to Luca. And one thing I really liked was that this movie didn't have the dead parent in the uh, when it came to Alberto's father, but he was absent and he never came and he never returned. You don't see that character in the movie, even though he's not dead. And I liked I liked that because I wasn't expecting that i was expecting that maybe we would find out that the father was dead later on and he had just been living on his own but you know you find out that his dad just left him and that was it peace um and i and i like how pixar kind of sneaks in these other kind of 
what you would def- what what normal society would define as abnormal living set- situations because even um do you remember the female character's name the girl what was her name Julia Julia right with the G um with Julia she talks about how she spends her so her summers there with her dad and then she'll go back and then you know she lives with her mom and it's like that's they don't call like so much attention to it but it's another way of just showing that yeah her parents aren't together and she's splitting her time between her parents but it doesn't need to be a big deal it is what it is and we move on and in a lot of i think children's mediums or children's like stories normally it's either the parents are dead or one parent is dead or both parents are together it's very rarely that the plant parents are separated and the kid is it actually have the kid living between the two uh, so I thought that that was a nice little subtle bit of storytelling that they added in for that character. Yeah, I think the other interesting thing about that is also that Luga's parents may have been together, but they were going to send him away. And that's just another, like, you know, typical family dynamic that, um, you know, even though the parents are together, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're like one happy family. <laughs> right? And yo, but to the abyss though, yo, that thing that sounds like prison. I was like, like, yo, y'all gonna send them to the abyss? They they don't got light down there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? it's like the opposite of Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Right? <laughs> yeah, first person learning, he had to go to a mansion at least. Y'all up here send him to to the darkness. And then she was like, one season, two seasons. Like, yo, two seasons of darkness? He gonna come back and be blind. Don't you <laughs> like, want to eat whale carcass? <laughs> <laughs> Man, well, whale carcass just flies in your mouth. <laughs> I was thinking it's gonna go in your eyes too. Like, uh-uh. That that seems a little that seems like a little much, but you know the parents they they represent the whole thing of like not wanting to change, and then the grandmother's the one that's like, okay, yeah, we will encourage change and try to push Luca along, which is why the grandmother wants him to go and hides his secrets and stuff like that. So yeah, it, it works. Me of uh, Moana's family. <laughs> yeah, I, it's, it's the same. Once again, it's the same type yeah. of story, right? We never go out onto the sea. We never go up there. We always stay here. Mm-hmm. We never go up onto land. We always stay in the sea. And then you have the grandmother, that's the kooky grandmother, that says, hey, no, it's okay. There's nothing wrong with it. And then we'll like make, um, we'll lie for the kid or co- cover for them or try to encourage them to go out and do the thing. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting how they, um, they the grandma actually regularly goes to the surface <laughs> right and yeah. then there's uh there's actually others who regularly hang out on the surface so it's 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 like a it's like a normal thing that just wasn't widely accepted below so um and i like the idea of that yeah no i i like that i, I like the idea of it too and the, what did you think about the gimmick um, that this movie had? The gimmick of them turning into sea monsters, and while while visiting, like uh, Julia literally says it. Of all the places you guys can visit, you visit a town that hunts sea monsters. <laughs> what is wrong with you? I mean, I, I like it because. Um... You know, they're kids. They're 10-year-old boys. They don't know anything. And um, it's just, like, it was even fun just seeing the boys, you know, play. Like, Vespa, and they make a Vespa, and they and, and they don't, like, actually drive it. They just build something that they can roll down the hill and then jump into the water. And, and that's what they do all day, every day, is they hang out and they do stuff like this. So, yeah, it's... Um, it's cute because uh you know it's just it's a play on on uh on youth and being an innocent young person and not having the you know uh outside um prejudices of 
two different clashing worlds. Right. Yeah, just wanting to live and enjoy it. I'm not I'm not gonna lie though, when um the parents showed up and they basically just start terrorizing kids <laughs> around the city, I legit could not stop laughing. I was I was like, yo, y'all are doing way too much. She kicked the ball and hit that girl so hard that she flew into the fountain. Yeah, I, um, I that was a that was a hilarious gimmick. It, that was just kind of like sprinkled throughout the film, uh, where like every time the kids see those two adults, they're like, "Please stop!" <laughs> like don't hurt, don't hurt no us. more. <laughs> like, and I, I I love the the little moments um, that Pixar still tries to sneak in their their adult humor jokes. Um, when like when the mother first gets there and she's like, I'll know my son when I see him and then sees all the kids and says, Oh sharks <laughs> And I was like, Ah <laughs> My brain filled in the rest when I heard oh sh I, I heard the rest. <laughs> but then you said sharks, I see you, Pixar, I see you. Yeah, that was a good one. <laughs> so gotta yeah. start using that one in the future. I I did have a problem with um, the villain Ercole. <laughs> I was gonna say we gotta talk about we gotta talk about Ercole. We gotta talk about this like forty year old man still trying to like be in this race for kids and also surrounding himself with a bunch of little kids, a bunch of little boys that he like runs around with. Like, yo, know, not a good look on not not a good look for you, man. Not look not a good look. <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah, definitely uh red flagging <laughs> that guy and um also just he's just so like one dimensional. One note. Yeah. Um yeah, and like it it was just too much. Like he even like goes so far as to basically rob them in front of a bunch of adults. And no one cares. No one does anything. Yeah, like, like that's why? her father's money that they all worked for. Yeah, and like that's robbery. And I think he also beats them up, like, uh, and stuff like that before he suspects them of being sea monsters. And like even that is like this. This kid is a criminal. He's like pretty much cheating, and like they know he's cheating, but they're letting him cheat. And then he does all this, like, violent stuff that's definitely illegal in any place, pretty much. And, like, no one cares. And yeah. It's, it's, it's even worse because he is still kind of a kid. He's, like, a young adult, at least. And he's terrorizing children, yeah. which is, like, extra not okay. <laughs> that was a little bit, like, too much for me because I'm like, this is, this is not, it doesn't fit. <laughs> This is well, weird. The thing that got the, the thing that got me was that I I got him when he was hunting the sea the the sea creatures or the the sea monsters before he knew what the sea monsters were. But the moment he finds out that the sea monsters are kids, I thought he would just be like, "What? It's a kid?" or like something to try to like back him off. But no, he he goes full Gaston, kill the beast. Like when he sees that like a kid turns into what looks like a sea monster and it's always it's nothing like oh it's a it's a kid or a child sea monster he's just like no i'm going to murder this thing give me my harpoon and i was like yo bruh that is you Dark. you know you you saw him when he was a when he had the appearance of a child and even if it's a sea monster the sea monster still has the appearance of a child <laughs> like what what are you on about yeah they really committed to his uh character being evil <laughs> like he's just pure evil um yeah it was a bit it was a bit much um yeah, yeah. let's talk about the animals <laughs> the animal sidekicks oh you mean like you mean that you mean that uh the cat that mean mugging cat i love the cat like i love the way they designed the cat to have it look like it has like a a total like Italian styled mustache. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> that cat that cat was evil. Like 
I, I got I got so mad that Luca had to bribe that cat with fish just to make sure that the cat wouldn't uh, uh, wouldn't attack his face. Like I was cheering for Luca when Luca threw that thing into the into the ocean. <laughs> like yes, serves your right, cat. I just <laughs> stop attacking was... my face next time. <laughs> I just love how it was like always glaring. Like I know what you're up to. <laughs> I know you're a you're liar. Right. But you know what? That reminds me, though, like the the father uh, character, because uh, you see the cat and the father together, which is also pretty interesting. It's like something they didn't need, but they they did. Um, and I was curious about it. But so you meet the father, and at first you're thinking the father's going to be like this kind of like mean, like what are these boys doing with my daughter type, or like oh I suspect you, I'm going to kill all sea creatures types. But um, the one thing that's interesting about the father is that. So he has one arm, and you're thinking that the story is going to be related to how he lost his arm. Um, but then when it finally comes down to it, and it, co- it comes up in like conversation, he's just like, "No, I was born this way," and then keeps it moving. And so it feels like that was something that was meant to kind of just subvert their expectations. But I did think it was kind of interesting that that was kind of it for it. You know, there wasn't anything more about like to that or that even his connection with alberto which i'll talk about in a second leads me to my only one of my only issues with the movie but i mean like how did you feel about that um i think it has to do with assumptions like you can't judge someone based off of what they look like and that's basically what his entire character is he looks like he's this big mean guy or like a, a big intimidating um you know uh, just someone that you don't mess with because he's very stern or whatever. But he's actually a softy, and that's all. Like you know, he's designed to look like a like a badass person, but he's actually just a really good dad. And he's not just a really good dad; he's a really good person. Um, for you know, um, Alberto went missing, uh, or you know, not missing, but he. He left because he had a fight with Luca, basically, and and he was like, "I'll go look for him." You know, he, you know, just in case uh, he might, you know. And I think even Julia said, "I don't think he's he wants to be found, or I don't think he's coming back." And he's like, "Well, I'm just gonna go look in case." And um, and I think that says a lot, and it really matches with it. It's not like you know, all in your face. Um, But I think it matches a lot with the theme of the movie, which is acceptance and not judging someone based on what they look like. Yeah, I agree. And that, so that leads to like my only kind of disappointment. It's not really a bad thing. It's just more my own personal disappointment with the movie where I like that moment so much where he says, well, I'm going to go look for him even just in case maybe he does want someone to find him. And I wish that he had found him. I wish that I had gotten a scene where just Alberto and the father got to talk because it felt like that would have been very powerful for both those characters. Um, you meet this father and he seems like someone that doesn't that's going to be mean and whatever and not going to like the boys at all, but he comes to like the boys. But not just that, he comes to really get a shine to Alberto. He asks specifically for Alberto's help with things. He goes on to on the water with Alberto and there when he talks about how he doesn't have an arm. So especially knowing that Alberto's father left him, I think for me I just want to see just a little bit more with the two of them talking so that I can see um just the it's like they kind of go there but they don't fully go all the way. I just want to see the last little bit of that story and that connection with Alberto and this man where they maybe even have a conversation where Alberto admits that his father left him. He doesn't have anybody. No one cares. Not even his friend doesn't care. And like, he just doesn't, he doesn't even have to reveal that he's a sea creature there, but just have that moment for him and then have this man be able to kind of act as a surrogate father so that now when we get to the end of the movie and Alberto chooses to stay behind with him, it, it holds more weight. So that's like my only disappointment. It's not like the movie absolutely needed it, but I I think it would have just been nice to see. 
Which yeah, I nice. agree. Um, I I didn't really think of it um, until you just said it, but I, you know, after you described that, I feel like it would definitely make the ending stronger. Um, I mean, it it was already like nice, and you know, uh, I guess uh, it made sense that Alberto would stay behind with him, um, and that they would have that connection there. But definitely, a, a scene with just the two of them would have made it much stronger. Yeah. So, but I mean, that's that's my only that's my only big big thing. Um, what about like? The, the big question about the Pixar movies that you gotta ask whenever you watch them: What did uh, what did your cry meter look like? Did you cry at all in this movie? Did you tear up? Did you get a little watery? What's, what was your cry meter for this for this film? I had to hold back a little bit, but I pulled through. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you did not actually cry? I did not. Yeah. Um... All right, you beat me. I got my eyes got a little watery. I felt. Like a little water might have like slipped out at one point, but you know uh, it was it was it was all right. But I couldn't completely hold back the water. It's like, darn it, why why is this so sweet? Darn you, Pixar! <laughs> How do you know to manipulate my emotions so well? It's infuriating. I hate them. Yeah, they definitely got me. They got me close. I I had to focus real hard on on not doing it. And I think the uh, the only Pixar movie that was able to really get my waterworks going despite trying very very hard not to cry was um toy story three oh <laughs> yeah yeah that toy story one, three kind of murdered all of us though <laughs> that one broke me <laughs> yeah i i i I'm, everyone i talked to that's seen toy story three um actually most people i talked to always talk about how toy story broke them so i mean that movie's a little different we grew up with toy story so it, it makes it makes a lot of sense so yeah, yeah. i i hear you <laughs> <laughs> but all right well i mean that's all the ma the major points that i wanted to hit before we um wrap up here is there anything that you wanted to still talk about i mean i don't really want to get too much into it because um i felt like i didn't really want to think about it while watching the movie um and that was the languages where like somehow the sea monsters can read but they're reading Italian, but they speak English, but they also know some Italian, but, you know, it, it was just a little all over the place, and I was like, you know, I'm just gonna roll with it, because I don't want to think about this. It's too complicated. I wish they they committed to the language as as much as they did to um, Ercole's <laughs> character <laughs> being evil. <laughs> Yeah, I it's funny. I had that same thing, and I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna let it go because I was thinking to myself, wait a second. So you're in this Italian um, place where people speak Italian, but you also all speak English. So when you go into this town, you can like have like the language to speak with each other, but then at the same time, you know some Italian. You don't know that much Italian. So now I'm just confused. <laughs> so I was like, you know what? We're just gonna roll with it. And I'm, they can I'm read. I'm gonna let it go. Yeah. Well, yeah, I understand. And are they reading English or are they reading Italian? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. I just assume that, you know, this part of the world, everybody speaks the same language as maybe like the fish people like here. It's, the, it's the, common. The top side <laughs> speaking. Um, one of the jokes I did like, though, was where the, the mother talks about, I don't know why dolphins make that noise. Like, why don't they just talk? <laughs> <laughs> like, okay <laughs> fine for the for the for the sake of this world yes sure. <laughs> nice one. Oh man yeah we don't have to get too much we don't, we don't have to get too much into that but was there anything was there anything else <laughs> uh no I think no the only thing left that I have to say is that I just I really thought it was funny when they were rolling down the hill on their Vespa. And then they were both riding it for the first time, and Luke was like, "Who's holding the board?" And then Alberto's like, "The turtle." And there's just a turtle there, with the board, and it's like, "What?" Oh yeah, that was funny. I saw that. Well, the turtle came back in the credits. Yeah, yeah. Turtle didn't My get turtle and the credits. cat were friends. <laughs> 
No. But yeah, that's but, it for me. All right. Well, yeah. What about um? What about you guys? Did you guys get to see Luca? And if you have seen it, what did you think about it? Did you like it? Did you think that it was, um, a good Pixar movie? Do you think it's not their best? Whatever you thought about it, comment below. Let us know. And while you're down there, if you give us a like, share, and subscribe. Even if you don't, though, I have been Chris, and this has been Cheryl, and we will see you all next time.